This is James Fox with another video tutorial for QuickBooks Pro 2013. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to receive a payment from a customer and apply that payment to an invoice. Now, the first thing we must do is we need to set the default option as to how you want to receive the payment. So to do this, click on the Edit menu and then click Preferences. In the left pane, click Payments and then click the Company Preferences tab. Now the two primary options to choose from are Automatically Apply Payments or Automatically Calculate Payments. I'm going to choose Automatically Calculate Payments. The reason why I'm choosing this option is because it gives you two options when you receive the payments. The first option that it gives you is that you can directly select the invoice for which you just received the payment. The second option that it gives you is that if you did not receive the exact amount for an invoice, you can enter in the amount that you received and adjust the amount that's due accordingly. If you were to choose automatically apply payments, you will not have the option to directly select the invoice for which the payment was intended. And I'll show you what that means. So click OK. Now QuickBooks must close all of the windows, so click OK again. Now bring up the QuickBooks home page again by clicking on the Home tab. Now I'm going to receive a payment from a customer and then apply the payment to an invoice. To do that, click on the Receive Payments icon on the QuickBooks home page or you can click on the Customers menu and then select Receive Payments. Now I'm going to select one of Joe's Landscaping's sample customers that has outstanding invoices. Now this sample customer has three outstanding invoices. Now let's assume that this customer has made a payment for invoice number one. If I want to apply that payment to invoice number one, I can simply place a check mark in the far left column. Now by placing the check mark in the far left column next to the invoice, you are directly selecting the invoice for which the payment is to be applied. This is what I meant a few moments ago when I selected the option in the Preferences section to automatically calculate payments. If you look in the Amount field, you will see $150, which matches the invoice exactly. Now, what if they mailed in a payment for invoice number one and invoice number two? Well, I would do the same thing by simply placing a check mark in the far left column next to invoice number two and the amount field increases to five hundred dollars that five hundred dollars is the total amount for invoice number one and invoice number two now in addition to selecting the invoice for which the payment is to be applied make sure you select the type of payment method click the drop down arrow in the payment method field and select the type of payment that you received you have the option of choosing cash check and various credit cards in this example, I'm going to choose check. There will be a check number field that you can use to type in the number of the check that the customer has sent to your company. Also, make sure that you select the date for which you received the payment. Now, if you look to the far right of the screen, you'll see the payment column. And in the payment column, you'll see $150 that will be applied to invoice number one, and you'll see $350 that would be applied to invoice number two. Once again, those totals equal $500. Now let's pretend for a second that the customer mailed in a payment that did not equal any of these invoices. So I'm going to deselect these options. Now let's assume that the customers mailed in a payment for $325. If you take a look at any of the outstanding invoices, you'll see that no combination of these invoices equal $325. So to apply a payment that doesn't equal any combination of invoices, the first thing you're going to do is type in the amount in the amount field and then press the tab key on your keyboard. Once you have done that, then you can select the invoices for which you want to apply that payment to. I'm going to select invoice number one and invoice number two. Now if you take another look in the payment column, you'll see a payment of $150 was made for invoice number one and that payment completely satisfies invoice number one. Then you'll see another payment of $175 being applied to invoice number two. Now the $175 is the amount after the $325 was applied to invoice number one. So now we have a partial payment being applied to invoice number two. 
Now if you look towards the bottom left, you'll see a section called underpayment. The underpayment is $175. A payment of $175 was made towards invoice number two, which leaves a balance of $175. Now QuickBooks is going to ask you, when you're finished, what do you want to do? Do you want to leave this as an underpayment or do you want to write off the extra amount? We are going to assume that the customer will send the remaining amount for invoice number two. So select leave as underpayment. Now if you look again towards the bottom right, you'll see the amount due of $500 and the amount that's going to be applied is $325 because that is the amount that was sent in by the customer. <coughs> now that's how you receive a payment from a customer and apply it to an invoice. If you have any questions, please email me. Once again, this is James Fox and I'll see you next time.